Uh, this is my office here, and I'm the librarian of the Internet Archive and trying to build a library of everything, a digital library of Alexandria. The Internet Archive is a direct descendant from those uh, hippie projects to go and uh, take back the power for the people. So the Internet Archive, by being from the Internet and the World Wide Web after the bulletin boards um, is sort of in that inheritance. And as part of that, the Internet Archive plays a role in supporting and believing in, providing institutional knowledge, archiving the old ideas and making it available to the new young generation that want these principles themselves. How can they learn from the past? So the Internet Archive project came out of the the visions of the internet, of having everyone have, having power for themselves to go and uh, learn whatever they wanted to learn, but also to publish, to go and make available and make everyone a publisher. This idea really came from, you know, maybe the early days of printing, but then that gets co-opted by large scale publishers. And the personal computers was a, was a boom in the idea that you can make your own computer for yourself. And this was a revolution and a time of conformity. When I was in college, we would spend time thinking about, oh, let's drop out of school and form communes. And how do we make a better society work together? How do you make people be alive and offer? And often that is, well, without money, without a lot of the organizations and institutions that were putting us into a line. So yes, I was part of that world, or at least the tail end of the hippies. And the, the tail end of the hippies was where the personal computers uh, and then the, uh, the internet really came from. A little bit too uh, young for exactly the, the the, when the hippies were strong, but a lot of those principles of let's spend our time and our lives trying to build a people's uh, enterprise uh, so that we have a game with many winners. So we don't have just one winner takes all and everybody else is crushed. That those principles have directed me for my whole life. And when I came of age, I said, I was good at technology. How do I use technology to make a better world? And the idea of building a library seemed to be a natural thing. So I've dedicated my life towards building a library of everything, including the dreams of those that came before, so that people can learn from them. And it's not just crushed out of existence by those that don't want you to know. One of the key things of the personal computer is it's a universal machine, right? It can do anything you want, right? By just programming it to be different. This is different from, say, a video game platform where it only plays the things that are told to it by the corporation. Or even your phones are basically, they're controlled and locked down. The personal computer was open. And this is the key concept of publishing or freedom of the press or where libraries are from. So the Internet Archive completely depends on this openness uh, and empowering where the control is in the people's hands, not in the corporations that are making a device that you have to use. The Internet Archive lives within a culture of these mega corporations. Uh, but we're kind of the old San Francisco hippies, right? We're the old, let's find ways to give it away. Let's find ways to connect people without necessarily have everybody pay for everything. Everything doesn't have to be monetized. It's not part of a, ver um, a VC structure where you're trying to sell out to go and make your millions. It's the people that work here are interested in sharing. And, and helping communities, and helping lots of communities flower. And that is the uh, part of San Francisco that lives on uh, in this uh, organization, and lots of pockets of the internet. I mean, um, maybe they're much smaller than the big corporations, 
but they're there. The dreams are still alive. Let's nurture them. Let's make the, the structures so that the next generation of personal computers will be born, supported, and grow. When something new comes along, it is uh, sometimes disturbing to those that are very comfortable in the way they used to exploit people. And if there's a change that shifts the power more towards people rather than the corporations or the governments, they're going to push back. And we have had a long period of time in the internet actually that allowed the internet to grow and change, um, whether it was bulletin boards and the like. There was still fights all the way through, but we are seeing a really strong push by governments and now uh, corporations to try to shut down the freedoms that we have become a com a a comfortable with um, in such a way that I don't know how they think they can roll back time where all of their control is in their hands, but this is a constant fight and the Internet Archive is part of the, uh, the Internet that is fighting for people's access. The hardest part for me is, is when people seem mean, when they, when they want to crush other people without real reason or just corporate greed. That's the hardest thing to really see. That the project of the Internet Archive in general has been people just saying thank you, right? Because it is just, it's a charity. It's a way of getting things out there. It's a way of making things preserved. But then there are other people that just try to crush either the Internet Archive or Wikipedia or open source software. And they just, they feel like this is what their corporation wants them or their government wants them to do. That I find deeply sad. I live for people to say thank you. Uh, I get a, a level of satisfaction. It makes me spring out of bed. Um, we do uh, interlibrary loan. So we go and take articles and book chapters, and I work it late at night to make sure that people have access. Um, and people just come back and say, thank you for what you do. Um, the 120,000 people donate to the Internet Archive every year. They, sometimes it's $3, and sometimes it's $5. And they often write a little note and say, why? And that makes me just so happy that it is that we can find a way to help people and have people find themselves through all of this information, through past histories, oral histories of people long ago, the early internet founders, the early personal computer makers, where uh, a lot of the early ham radio, the amateur radio people, those people are, uh, are inspiring a new generation. That is just the value that makes me spring out of bed in the morning and want to go and do this. When a lot of this started, it just allowed us to touch and feel the world that was never really in our, our grasp. But now it's becoming sort of part of us. I mean, Facebook is even just sort of glued on, our phones are glued to our faces all the time. We're talking about implants that were just part of this networked world. And um, I don't know that even some of the younger generation know what it was like to it might feel like you're always on a camping trip. Everybody was on a camping trip, since they were unconnected. That was what life was like. Um, now we've got this hyper connection, and for better and for worse, because it comes with a level of surveillance, expectation that you're going to answer at all times. Um, we need to keep going and reinventing and reinventing because otherwise we will be building our own cage that we will be uncomfortable to be in.